I'm gonna be la- I'm gonna be laughing about that all day now. All right, so real quick, let's just review. So when we approach solving equations with rational expressions, all right, uh, the first thing to do, really, and you know, let me go back to I think an easier example, all right. Let's look at this one right here. So the first thing to do really is to determine from the start what values of X am I not allowed to have? Now, I, I, what I'm really doing here is I, I'm asking you the same question that I've asked you before. The question I'm really asking is find, let me write in a different color so you know, so you know this is new. Find the domain. That's really what I'm asking. Remember, the, the domain means any X value that I'm allowed to use, okay, without breaking something. So from the start of this problem right here, where it says today we will look like we will look at a problem like below, okay? Right here, I can see X cannot equal five. Because if X equals five, I get a zero right there and the whole problem breaks. Also, X is not allowed to equal negative six because if X is negative six, I get a zero in the last fraction and the whole, uh, and that whole problem breaks on the far left side. I actually have to factor that, but ironically it factors down into X plus six and X minus five, which I already have them on the right side respectively. So I know that if I were to do this problem right here, and I would have fun with all the way down to two solutions. If either of those solutions would be five or negative six, I can't include that in my answer. Does that make sense? So it's always good from the start of the problem to ask yourself, <clears throat> all right, let's get rid of the numbers I know I can't have. So if you look at this problem, solve three minus six over X equals X plus eight. Right there, I set my denominator equal to zero, or better yet, not equal to zero. And that tells me, hey, at the end of the problem, if you come up with zero, no solution. If you come up with anything else, it's probably the right answer. The real way to check it is to substitute it everywhere and just simplify. Okay? Now, how do we actually go about solving a problem like this? First thing we do, we find the LCD. In this case, it's X. Second step, I'm going to multiply everything by X. Now, um, I was emailed the other day. Actually, no, I think it was last night, to be honest with you. Uh, it, Zoom classes, like my life, just all the days just melt together now. So I really don't remember too much. But what I do remember is this. I got an email, and the student was telling me that the, the website does it differently than I do. And obviously, I took great offense to that. I was like, what? What? I got all like huffy puffy. So then I looked at what they're doing, okay? And here's what they do. Give myself a little bit of space here. They multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD. So they write it like this. They put an X out front and parentheses around the entire left side. Oh, I forgot to put my X out front. I put a three instead. Then they put an X out front and multiply the entire right side. But if you notice from here, you need to use a distributive property. So you get three X minus X times six over X equals X times X plus eight X. In other words, you multiply every single term by your LCD. So the book is not doing anything different for me. They're just, they're actually adding in a, more, a new step that really is not necessary. All right. So just remember, whenever you find your LCD, you're going to multiply every single term by that LCD. So that is how we got X times three. And then this was, remember... That was X times six over X. That looks really crappy. So I'm just going to erase it and just write it. There we go. Equals X times X 
plus x times a. Now it's just a matter of simplifying. One step, you can eliminate all your denominators. Sometimes the denominators are really simple, like x. It was one thing. Other times you may have to factor something and figure it out. Regardless, the whole goal of step one, multiplying by the LCD, is to eliminate all fractions at once. So if you go through your problem and you don't eliminate your fractions in one step, you're doing it wrong. All right. And that's when you got to ask me questions. You got to say, oh, how did you do that? Okay. So don't worry. Like I said, we're, we'll do some example problems today. I don't have a problem with that. Now, once we simplify, the next thing we got to determine is well, what type of problem do we have? Now, that is why I have this x to the second power highlighted in blue. Because we've reached this moment in our studies of mathematics where you got options. In other words, you have more tools to win the game. The problems are getting more complex, but your tools that you are given are also becoming more complex and they help you to make this look easier. So the first thing I did is after I simplified everything, we're left over with 3x minus 6 equals x squared plus 8x. I take a step back and I look and I go, whoa, the 3x is linear. Let, let me show you. Hopefully, all, hopefully everybody is looking at the screen. The 3x is linear. The 8x is linear. But the x to the second power is quadratic. That is going to dump. Sorry, hold on one sec. You animals are going to ruin my office space. All right, now let's play nicely. What is you? Uh, there we go. All right. Galileo, Artie, play nice. Thank you. All right, I'm back. Okay. So anyways, so back to this. I get 3x minus 6 equals x squared plus 8x. We've already established that 3x, the 8x are linear. The x squared is quadratic. That is going to dominate because it's the highest exponent. So because x to the second power dominates, I know this problem is quadratic. Wrong marker. This problem is quadratic, which means I need to go through my steps to solve quadratic equations. Luckily for you, they're easy. Set it equal to zero, factor, set each factor equal to zero, solve. That's it. Like, that's the momentum. So, I got to be honest with you. And I know it's easier said than done. But if you just take a step back after you after you do, you're, you're multiplying by the LCD and simplifying a little bit. Right after that, if you could just take a step back. And then look at the problem and figure out what type of problem you have. Is it linear or is it quadratic? If you could do that, you will be playing chess when everyone else is playing checkers. Because see, I think a lot of people can go through the motions if I tell you what the problem is. But you got to be able to determine, okay, what am I given? In fact, the next two sections that we're going to learn are solving compound linear inequalities and solving absolute value equations. And they're different rules. So you got to know what type of problem you're given. So, like I said, clearly this is quadratic. So all we did is we set it equal to zero. That's right there. We factored. That's right there. We set each factor equal to zero. That's right there. And then we solved. And the only thing that we need to do is check our answers. We need to make sure that x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 3, we need to make sure that either answer does not break the question. So, let me see. Did I do it? Yeah, I did it over here. So, for example, I let x equal negative 3, and I check it just to make sure everything's okay. The thing I'm really, really, really trying to avoid are going to be x or zeros in my denominator. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Are there any questions with that? All right. So why don't we look at a problem where we actually uh, have to decide, okay, is this a solution or not? And then it actually turns out that uh, only one answer is valid versus the other one is not. All right. So 
Give me a second. Let me change my marker. Scroll over. Are there any questions with what I've done so far? Because I got to be honest with you. I think I rattled that off very fast. So am I moving too fast? Abigail, I'm asking you specifically now. Okay, thank you very much. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Here's a situation where uh, we're going to find out that it looks like we have an answer, but in reality, we don't. So, example, solve. 2 over x, or I'm sorry, 2x over x minus 4. equals 8 over x minus 4 plus 1. <clears throat> Come on, keep moving, keep moving. There you go, buddy. Thank you. You stepped on my keyboard. Okay, right from the start, what value of x am I not allowed to have? Four. Good. So from the start, We know x cannot equal 4 because I will get a 0 in my denominators. So we know right off the start, x is not allowed to equal 4. <clears throat> that is unbelievably powerful if we can do that. Okay? Now, step one, <clears throat> find the LCD. So we look at our denominators. They're both X minus four. So my LCD equals X minus four. Step two. Actually, no, it's not step two. It's still step one. Find the LCD. Multiply everything by the LCD. All right? So that's what I'm going to do. So if you want to, just watch for a second. Watch how I set this up. X minus four times. And I'll put it in a big bracket so it looks clean. So there's the left-hand side of the equation. Now I'm going to do that for the right-hand side also. All right. So I'm, I, I wrote x minus 4, and I multiplied it times every single term in the equation. The whole reason why I'm doing this is so I can simplify my denominators. That is where your eyes need to go next. In other words, you got the x minus 4 out front. And you have an x minus 4 in a denominator. Also, don't forget, out front, that x minus 4 is over 1. So the x minus 4 out front is in the numerator. The x minus 4 in the fraction is in the denominator. No matter which way you look at it, <clears throat> you have x minus 4 over x minus 4, which simplifies to 1. So what I like to do is just scratch them out. Galileo, you got to stop, dude. Anyways, next, you write what's left over. What's left over? I'm going to highlight in green. 2x over 1. That's what's left over. Now, I'm not going to write the over 1. I'm just going to write 2x. Then I'm going to put an equal sign. And I'm going to do the same thing for every single term in this problem. So for the middle fraction, the 8 over x minus 4, I can see that the x minus 4 is reduce. I'm left over with an 8 plus 
Now, the last thing, uh, I have one times a quantity X minus four. I'm just going to leave it like that because nothing simplified there. There was no denominator, so I don't have to worry about anything. Oops. I wrote X plus four. All right. So if you think about it, in step one, found the LCD multiplied by everything, I've made this problem that had rational expressions into a problem that doesn't have any. So now, step two. Use distributive property to remove parentheses. So, I'm just going to rewrite the problem. And I'm going to distribute the 1. So that gives me 2x equals 8 plus x minus 4. All right. From here, can anybody tell me what type of problem I have? What type of problem do I have? How do you know that? Perfect. The exponent on the X is just a one. In other words, you don't see X to the second power or anything like that. So I know this is linear. So I go through my steps of solving linear equations. So step three, and I'm really, really breaking this down. I didn't do this in the previous class. So step three, you're going to combine like terms on each side. Meaning, you look only on the left-hand side, and you combine like terms. Then you look only on the right-hand side, and then you combine like terms. On the left, and I'm just going to rewrite the problem. So on the left-hand side, there's nothing I can do. On the right-hand side, 8 minus 4 is 4. Okay? Are there any questions there? All right, step four. Oh. Variable terms and constant terms on opposite sides. And there's a reason why I'm writing just VT and CT. I'll tell you in a second. So let's go ahead. Let's rewrite the problem. Now, variable terms, 2x on the left, variable term x on the right. I need to bring them together. So I will subtract x from both sides. Why did I choose the x on the right-hand side to move? Because I had more stuff on the right-hand side, which means I have more moves I can make. 2x minus x is x. And I'm left over with a 4 on the right. Now, step 5. Divide by, or divide both sides. By the coefficient. You should know what that word means by now. So our coefficient is a 1. It's in front of the x. So I don't have to do anything. Dividing anything by 1 doesn't change anything. Step 6. Check. At the very start of the problem... We found that x cannot equal 4. However, now I don't want to use the word there, however. So at the start of the problem, we found that x cannot equal 4. What did we come up with? What did we come up with? 4. But we know we're not allowed to have that, correct? Since we are not allowed to have
So since we are not allowed to have x equals 4, this problem has no solution. And that'll happen from time to time. Just because it looks like you have an answer doesn't imply that you do. You got to be better than that. You got to be better than that. Okay? <clears throat> Are there any questions with that? All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a problem to do. I have no idea what the answer is because I haven't even done this problem yet. All right? But what I do want you to do is I want you to solve it and please check your answers. Make sure they work. Okay? So solve. Oh, let's see here. I'm just looking at the exercise set out of your book. We'll pick a good one here. How about one plus three over X plus one equals X over X minus one. Try that. Anybody need any help?
Did anybody happen to get an answer yet? Wow. Did Captain America get an answer? <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I love Captain America. I, I used to have the wrestling buddies growing up, and my brother and I used to practice all of our wrestling moves on them. Just in case, you know, we got into a situation where I had to suplex somebody or give somebody the Stone Cold Stunner, you know, because it happens also, also frequently. So did anybody get an answer yet? Is there an answer? Is there a solution? Yes or no? How about that? How many, let me ask this question. How many just have no idea what to do? Please unmute yourself and say, I have no idea what to do. Remember, we are learning this. All right? We are learning this. So it is okay to not know what to do right now. All right, let me ask you this question. I'm 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 begging for feedback here. If you haven't noticed, I'm begging. What values of x am I not allowed to have? Because that should be the first thing we look for. One and negative one. Good. We are not allowed to have one, or we'll put negative one or one. In other words, x cannot equal negative one comma one. Like we know that right from the start. How do we know that? We look at our denominators, we set them equal to zero, and we solve. So I know if I do all this work and I come up with negative one or positive one, that's not a good solution. That doesn't mean that your solution is incorrect. It means that those numbers are not allowed to be solutions for the answer or for the problem. So I'm just rewriting it. What's my LCD? You know what? Let me ask you this question. How do I know I need an LCD first? Instead of me just asking you what is it, maybe I should ask, maybe I should be asking, why do we need it? The denominators are different. Yeah, denominators are different. And we want to we when solving, the first thing we want to do is eliminate them. We want them to reduce. So the reason why we need an LCD is to reduce the denominators. And the only way to do that is to multiply by the LCD, which is going to be X plus one times X minus one. That's it. Okay. So now I'm going to multiply every single term by the LCD. Are there any questions with that? Like are there any questions with how did I get it? Are there any questions with how am I going to use it? Okay. X plus one times X minus one. That's times one. So that's the first one. Now. X plus one times X minus one. multiplied by three over X plus one, and I'll put the X plus one in parentheses. And lastly, the right-hand side. <clears throat> okay. Now let's just go left to right. X plus one times X minus one times one. Does anybody notice anything about X plus one and X minus one? What are they?
What are they? I mean, if you don't know what they are, that's fine. You can still multiply it out. You're going to get the same thing. But we should be able to recognize that. Terms are the same. Signs are opposites. Difference of squares. X plus 1 times X minus 1 is the factored form of X squared minus 1. Even if you went through and you actually multiplied it, X times X is X squared. X times negative 1 is negative X plus X minus 1. And you grouped your middle terms. You get X squared plus 1. There's no excuse. you got to know how to do that problem. Whether it's you recognize it as difference of squares or you just multiply it out. But regardless, we know how to do that already. Next. Now I'm looking at that big middle part. I'm looking right here. This is where I'm looking right there. Okay, <clears throat> here's what I notice. First and foremost, that is over one. Second, those are the same, which means if I were to multiply this out, what would happen to the X plus one in the numerator and X plus one in the denominator? What would end up happening? Anybody. It zero. No, it doesn't equal zero, Carly. Because it, because if it was zero and I would multiply by zero, then everything's eliminated, correct? That's why I'm confused because I thought there was a no solution at first, so I'm confused. Well, no, 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 no. The no solution is we know these are not allowed to be the answers. We got to figure out what the answers are. Because what if we get numbers that are different? All this tells me right here is these are the numbers I know initially I'm not allowed to have. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, what happens to the X plus 1 in the numerator and the X plus 1 in the denominator? Cancel out. They cancel each other out. Now, technically, I don't like the word cancel. I like the word reduce. So, they reduce... You scratch them out. You write what is ever left over. So tell me what's left over. X minus one. More than that. Uh, three times X minus one. There it is. Three times X minus one. Okay. Now, let's look at the right hand side. Remember, this is over one. I notice I have an X minus one in the numerator and an X minus one in the denominator. What happens there? What happens? They reduce, very good. Thank you, I think that was April, right? Yeah. So tell me what's left over. Yep, x times x plus 1 over 1, but we don't write the over 1 part. Because remember, dividing anything by 1 doesn't change anything. So here's what we have. We have x squared minus 1 plus 3 times the quantity x minus 1 equals x times the quantity x plus 1. So now I'm going to use my distributive property to get rid of some parentheses. x squared minus 1 plus... 3x minus 3 equals x squared plus x. Now, right now I'm looking, what type of problem do I have? It looks quadratic. I agree with you, April. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to group all of our like terms, okay? Get everything over to the left-hand side and set it equal to 0. Am I right? First thing I'm going to move is the x squared. Get them together. They stick out like a sore thumb. So, I subtract both sides by x squared. More importantly, I'll show you the x squared that I'm actually subtracting. It's this one right here. 
That's the one I'm subtracting. And by doing that, uh uh-oh, look what happens. Negative 1 plus 3x minus 3 equals x. So I initially went from something that was quadratic into something that's now linear, which can happen. In other words, because I subtracted x squared, my x squared terms dropped out. That happens. Okay? That will happen. So now I just go back to solving a linear equation, which is really simple. I look on the left-hand side. Can I group any like terms? Absolutely. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. So I get 3x minus 4 equals x. I will subtract 3x from both sides. Negative 4 equals x minus 3x or negative 2x. And then I divide both sides by negative 2 to give me x equals positive 2. So right here, I'm looking at this answer or this solution. I'm going, that looks really good. And how do I know that? Because it's not 1 and it's not negative 1. Those two numbers break my problem. Does that make sense? Other than that, this 2 looks really good. There's only one surefire way that I know my answer is actually correct. And that is, you got to go back to the original problem. I'm going to write it in red. Wherever you see an X, put parentheses. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you substitute in what you got. So wherever I see parentheses, I'm going to substitute in the 2. And I'm just going to simplify. So on the left-hand side, I get 1 minus 3 over 2 plus 1. Well, 1 minus 3 over 3 is 1 minus 1, which is 0. Equals. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did we make a math mistake somewhere? Because I'm not getting the same thing on the left and right sides. Oh, no, 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 my, my, my math is correct. Did I make a math mistake somewhere? Because if, 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 I'm telling you, I had to have. The original problem was 1 plus 3 over x plus 1. And there is the original, there. So, the mistake was, I don't know how to copy down correctly. This is supposed to be a plus, which makes this a plus, which makes that a plus. And 1 plus 1 is 2. So I know my answer is correct. Because I didn't think I made a math mistake. But it's possible because I'm not perfect. I'm almost perfect, but I'm not perfect. Right, April? <laughs> All right. Are there any questions? All right. Let's do another one. Because this one, you really didn't have to do much. I mean, the hard part, I thought, was all that right there. It's all the simplifying stuff. All right, let's do another one. This time, it's going to be a little bit more intense. So, this is a, this is a, a problem that a student sent me last night at about 10 o'clock at night. So, I did it and emailed it back to her. And we're going to do it right now. Now, here's the mistake that the student was making. <clears throat> At least this is what I, what I thought was happening. Um... The student nailed, nailed the LCD, but then said, I'm still getting the answer wrong. I don't think they were checking their solution. 
So right from the start, I know y cannot equal 3 or negative 3. Like I know right from the start, y is not allowed to equal negative 3. How do I know that? Well, if I took each denominator, set it not equal to 0 and solved, I can see in each case, and maybe I should have wrote it over here. In each case, if 3 is in the denominator, or negative 3 is in my denominator, I get 0, and I don't want that. So I know from the start, y cannot equal negative 3, and I'll circle it. I'm just going to erase all this stuff. Because here's what's happening. The student kept getting y equals negative 3 for a solution. They kept typing it into my math lab. And every single time it said, no, you're incorrect. They weren't checking their solution. All right? The previous problem, we checked it. Everything was nice and everything was good. Everything passed our test. And this one, let's do this. Now, what's the first thing I need to do? What's my first move? LCD. Okay, so I agree. Can somebody tell me what the LCD is? a little harder say it again say it again jay i'm sorry i cut you off uh no i disagree with that <clears throat> i mean honestly jay technically you can use that i wouldn't Yeah, how'd you get that? Um, you have to factor like the first two denominators. So you can like take a three out of the first one, you take a two out of the first one. So I multiply like the three and two, and you get the y plus three. Couldn't agree uh, or uh, couldn't agree more. Couldn't have said it better myself. We need to factor every denominator. Now I'm just gonna write it over here. We know the LCD is going to be the product of unique factors. Here's the thing. I know if you're studying or not. I know if you're reading your book. I know if you're reading your notes. I will know if you're reading our notes and techniques because you'll be able to do this. If you have problems with this, it's because we're not reading, we're not understanding why we're doing something. So the LCD is going to be the product, which means multiplication, of unique, which means different, factors. Things that are being multiplied. That 3 is unique. This 2 is unique. And the Y plus 3 is unique. Although it's shared in every single denominator, <clears throat> it's still unique. So we have 2 times 3 times Y plus 3. Or, as April said, 6 times y plus 3. So that's my, that is my LCD. Okay, are there any questions? With how we found that. All right, next. I will take my LCD and I will multiply every single fraction by it. So... I'm going to write 6 times y plus 3. And then in brackets, I'm going to write my factored denominator. Okay. Oops. Got the other side. And I'm going to do that for every single fraction here.
<clears throat> All right. How are we looking so far, everybody? How are we looking so far? Are we okay? All right. Now, there, there are a couple moves here I can see. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it consistent with what we've been doing the entire time. All right. Here's what I notice. Everything highlighted can be reduced. Everything highlighted can be reduced. The Y plus threes will reduce to a to a one, and a three over three will reduce to a one as well. Are there any questions with that so far? Because I'm going to scratch them out here, so I need to know. Are, like, do we understand? Three over three is one. Y plus three over Y plus three is one. All right, so I'm going to scratch them out. I write what's ever left over. In this case, it happens to be the six times Y because they're the only things that are not highlighted. Then I put a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, then I put a plus sign. And the reason why I put a plus sign is because I have a plus sign right here. Next, I will highlight things that I see are the same. Now, that 2y minus 14 in the numerator. I could have factored a 2 out of that, huh? So why don't I just do that? So that gives me 2 times the quantity y minus 7. I will highlight things that I see that are the same in the numerator and denominator. And I know they reduce to a number one. So I'm going to scratch them out. So are there any questions before I scratch them out? All right. So let's go ahead, let's reduce the y plus 3. And then we're going to reduce the 2 over 2. What do I have left over? Everything that's not highlighted. 6 times y minus 7. Okay? Okay equals on the right hand side <clears throat> I will highlight everything that's the same in the numerator and denominator for us that is only going to be the y plus 3 now I'm going to reduce them I will scratch them out and I will write what's ever left over 6 times 4y minus 1. All right. From here, I just follow my steps. I see parentheses. I use the distributive property to remove them. 6y plus 6y minus 42 equals 24y minus 6. Everything looks linear. So I'm going to combine my like terms on the left side. 6y plus 6y is 12y minus 42. On the right-hand side, there's nothing I can combine. So I just rewrite it. Now I will get variable terms together, constant terms on the opposite side. So uh, I will subtract 
24Y. I just chose that. 12 minus 24 is negative 12Y. Minus 42 equals negative 6. I will add 42 to both sides. That gives me negative 12y equals 36. And then I divide both sides by the number in front of the variable. So I divide both sides by negative 12 to give me y equals negative 3. And we know from the very start of this problem, are we allowed to have y equals negative 3 for a solution? So what you do is you put a big fat X through it and you write no solution. Okay. So what I, what I was deducing from the email last night is the student kept getting Y equals negative three, which mathematically is correct. But once you start applying your knowledge of math and knowledge of fractions, you're not allowed to have negative three for a solution because it makes the denominator equal to zero. And all it takes is just one denominator of zero to break it, to break the entire problem. In this case, it just happens to make all of them equal to zero. Are there any questions? Abigail, did I, did I clear some cobwebs for you? Yeah, all right. Cause I'm, I'm going to be honest. This isn't easy. I'm, you know what I mean? I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to, I'm not sitting here saying, oh, pfft. you do one or two problems, you'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, this, you got to take your time with it. You really, I mean, you really got to take your time. Uh, I'll zoom out here. I mean, if you look at just the overall essence of my problem, uh, everything's organized. I write neatly. I didn't write fast. You can see that, you know, this funnels down. I mean, everything is just... My room may be messy, but not my math. I take my math very seriously. Oh, he's sleeping, by the way. So, if there are no questions, I'm going to call it a day. All right? Let me just hit...